to the uh, February 26th, 2020 Solid Waste uh, Subcommittee of Public Works. And uh, tonight we are going to primarily focus on discussion of the draft of the RFI that was pre presented to us at our last Public Works meeting. And um, Rebecca, you might as well uh, take front and center, you and Mac. I hope that everybody's had a chance to review uh, the uh, multi-page draft of the RFI and have put together some questions uh, for Rebecca and anyone else really so we can just start with an open uh, discussion uh, ask any questions or Rebecca I don't know do you have a presentation that you're going to also do tonight or not necessarily I wanted to for sure get your all feedback on what we shared the last meeting right and then um, the mayor had shared this request for expression of interest from Portland Oregon yep. I think there, you know, we'll go through that if you want to yeah, and look okay. at some Mr. of the Mr. highlights. Mr. to go through that and hit some of the highlights. Yeah. Some are pertaining because I, it, it is a metro area and Oregon doesn't pertain to us, but it, there's a lot of things in there that, that uh, can be replicated here for us. Right. And there's no reason because we were able to pull this off the internet. It's yeah. public. Sure. You know, we didn't have to pay the seventy-five thousand dollars for the study, so why not? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. it's public. Right? It's good, re good research. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So uh, I, I, we've gone through this and highlighted some of the things, and so uh, Becky's prepared to um, go through this presentation and see which ones that you all want to okay. uh, put into our RFI. Well, Becky, okay. if it makes the most sense, then I'll just let you lead, and then if you uh, want us to interject with questions or save questions to the end, you just direct us on how you want us to. Let's, um, let's make comment as we go through okay. so that I can mark it, because then I'll make these changes and bring right. it back to you. Does everybody have a copy of the draft? Yes. All right, good. Okay. All right, Becky. You're on the call. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you all for having me again. Um, so, this is the RFI that we looked at the last time. We kind of went through the highlights on it. I've gotten comments from a handful of people. Um, not a lot of big changes. Some, you know, some verbiage and different things like that. But I want to hear from you all as to what your questions are, what your thoughts are. Are there things you want included, things you think shouldn't be included? Because ultimately, this is your. Um, so you're basically asking for questions mm -hmm. right off the bat. All right. Whatever. Well, for for the one that we looked at the last. Okay. At the last meeting. Okay. It, it 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 seems it seems to me that one of the most valuable pieces that anybody that looks at this document that wants to participate with the technology that population growth is is an important piece, which you have here in this first page graph. Um, because those in the business will know that, you know, one person equals so many pounds of trash per day, per week. I'm sure there's calculations the for that. The Tennessee number is each resident in Tennessee generates one ton of trash per year. Ton per year, okay. Uh, residential. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, children too. They total. Yeah. All right. That's your average. average. All right. So that question. Uh, that being said, uh, these population numbers are projections that you pulled from the GNRC, right? Yes. And are those numbers? Oh, I mean, where do those numbers come from? Are you confident with those population growth numbers? Um, those are numbers that are actually based on what we use regionally. Okay. So those are numbers that are used for transportation studies. Um, All right. Census, you know, ballpark figure or baseline. Okay. So um, they're they're all legit. Anybody could research those. Oh yeah. In multiple different 
Google searches and basically find the same kind of a comparison. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to probably find exactly the same numbers in every case because some population uh, numbers are based on annual. Okay. These are actually based on every five years because it's an average instead of looking at yeah. one year to the next. It gives you a better idea, a better ballpark figure of what okay. you're looking at realistically. And then I have I have one other question. As, as I look at the years, they're basically in five-year increments mm -hmm. with the exception of there is a, a three-year increment between 2015 and 2018, and then, then we're in current time at 2020, mm -hmm. and then we make a big jump to 2025. So there's no, you have eight years, an eight-year span in there, which we're in the third year of or second year of, that has no figures. Can that can was we, in, in anticipation of the census, the 2020 census, but okay. I'm glad to fill that in with what we have at the office. Okay. As a projection, we just won't have an actual number. Yeah. Okay. So, would you like me to include 2020? Just insert 2020 there. I, I think I would prefer to see 2020 in there, kind of as a as a baseline, because then. Then the next, you know, pontification is 2025. That's five years away. That just seems like a big gap to me. Would you like me to leave 2018 in there as well? Uh, if you have the data, I'd leave yeah, it in there. Yeah, yeah. We but I, I would, you know, asterisk 2020 with the mm -hmm. anticipated growth. Anybody else have questions on the first page or, the, or that table? How, how do these numbers work with the projection you see on the news and or newspaper that we're gaining 23, 24 people a day? How do these numbers match with that? I haven't compared it to number of people, but I'll be glad to. Um, to number of people? Like number of people per day or per period of time. It's just ba basically you all are growing at an average of two to two and a half percent overall for every five years. Or I'm sorry, every year. Each year you're growing two percent of your population, give or take. That correlates pretty close to what the schools grow in students per year, percentage wise. And these are averages for every five years. Is 2045 is that as far as we're reaching out with this project right now? Or are we supposed to be looking at it further than that? Our hope is to have a very long-term 50 to 100-year project is what we would love to have. I'm not sure we can get that with technology changes and all the other things that's going to play in, in factors with it. And then if you look at population growth past 2045, then that's just truly an estimated projection that nobody really knows. Historically, correct me if I'm wrong here, projections for Rutherford County has been way under projected. Right. Well, with technology and development and all trash could possibly decrease too mm -hmm. in the future. You know. Who knows? It might just zap it with a laser gun and disappear. Yeah. I don't know. You know but, <laughs> magic uh, carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Put on a magic carpet and it flies away. But well, they present that black box thing. Yeah, that black box is Well, and I'll say electronics are an example of that. So we used to have computers that weighed a lot more, televisions that weighed a lot more. Much I'm, I'm hoping when the RFP weighs a lot less. Uh, is issued uh, that we we can negotiate a 30 or 40 year uh, project. That was where we need to be. Anything else on page one? Or here, and then we have this round that don't care.
Becky, on the bottom of page one and then on the top of page two, it says in 2018, Rutherford County collected 44,618 tons of residential solid waste mm -hmm. um, with approximately 7,000 tons of that generated from county facilities, including county schools, county highway department, animal control, et cetera. Um, but, and to be clear, and I think it says this in the bottom of that first paragraph, no campuses, uh, no higher education, no campuses, uh, trash years is included in that number. Right. Okay. And this, this is strictly the city, what in the city of Marshboro, the number is not in there either. Right, okay. So no city, no higher ed, and no commercial, no institutional, no institutional, no industrial. Well, the schools would be considered institutional. Okay. All right. and, then, and then you have all your shut-ins. Yeah. The workhouse, the jail, and the nursing home. But no, MTSU is not. No, yeah. MTSU does their own. Yeah, no retail, nothing. Okay. No commercial. All right. So. Let me ask this body. You know, by law, we know what we have to do, and that's the unincorporated areas, and then we, and the city of Murfreesboro. Again, I'm, I've got this internal conflict of how how we how big are we going to go? Um, do we need do we need to in show? I guess the question is. Just because we're not doing institutional, retail, commercial now, if we have the right technology, doesn't mean we may not start doing that. So I'm just throwing the question out there. Do we, do we have an idea what those tons are? And could those, you? Could those you? tons are probably going um, throughout Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, Northern Alabama, Northern Mississippi. You don't think um, most of it's going to be middle point because of the hauling? It depends on, it depends on how they run it. Depends on which, what truck it's on. What company's collecting it? Now the, my opinion, I guess. Yeah. But we historically have, have concerned ourselves with the residential collection, and that's what the state requires us to do. There's enough private industry already in business here. We don't need to get in the private industry side. We we let them handle that. Now, as far as collection, now if you want to look at disposal part of it, then you may want to do that. But I, I think our goal should be to start with is just the residential garbage within the county, whether we actually touch it today or not. And that's really that's, what that's the, to manage that's the that. big part. The, all the growth and the businesses and all that kind of stuff, then they have to pay their own anyway. So. Okay. So with uh, Smyrna, Laverne, Eagleville, all not having curbside service, and we're still responsible for the residential, have we ever been able to, because it is private contractors involved with the convenience centers, has there been any way to estimate that volume? Have we? Uh, I don't, I don't recall us estimating that volume. We, we have not. The, the state number of a, a ton per year per, per person could give us a close estimate based on their tonnage, which is we're a little over 300,000 people, so you're a little over 300,000 tons. We've been looking at, you know, whatever we do, we may have to bring trash in from outside. Well, if we're dealing with 300,000 tons of residential waste, we don't need to bring a whole lot from outside. Now, in this scope statement, it pretty much covers, if I read it correctly, that there's some in, unanticipated uh, amounts because they presently, the, the incorporated, other incorporated areas do not do a curbside service. So, I mean, we're still responsible for that residential no matter. But in, that, in my opinion, again, is uh, convenience center style of doing, dealing with trash with 300,000 today is a struggle. We're looking at doubling that number in what, 40 years, whatever the time frame is. I don't think you know that's gonna be the proper way to manage it then. So we, we probably need to look at curbside collection in all the incorporated, all the cities and in the large subdivisions. Now there's gonna be some areas of the county, it's just not dense enough, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, the convenience centers would still stay in play 
uh, in these pickup days, bulk items. Uh, if you're not going to do curbside recycling, then they can take the recycling there. You know, so the solid waste department today would maybe be a little smaller trucking wise than what it what, what it is today in the future. But you're still going to have to have that type of operation. Would it be safe to say that if Republic closes, that a lot of these private companies will go out of business? I don't know that safe would be the right right answer. You've got some small mom and pop operations that they'll if they want to stay in business they'll be able to. They can they can go to Nashville to a transfer station. Uh, there's multiple companies have transfer stations up there, so they can you know go to Nashville. There's uh, some companies that's here local that go to Nashville already, just so they're not in the mud and they're not you know having entire issues running through the nails and all that kind of stuff. The operational cost may be worth that extra travel. So, Mike, you, what do you think? We have private haulers, 12, 14. Somewhere in that neighborhood. In the neighborhood in the county, and we go in this direction, maybe six remain. Uh, no, I think if, if we look at it, and Joey Smith and I have talked about it, you know, they do residential here in town. Roughly 6,000 homes would be a route week for one automated truck. So the sm small mom and pops, if you divided it up in 6,000 home blocks and you bid that out, the small mom and pop people could bid on one or two, sure. whatever they needed. You now the large companies would, would bid on all of it probably, but they may not get it all. Sure. <clears throat> you know, the intent there would be possibly not putting, putting them out of business. And, uh, Another discussion that Becky and I had earlier this week was uh, does Smyrna, Laverne, and Eagle do that on their own, or does the county do it for them? It's going to be a property, it's going to be a fee somewhere. So if the cities do it, more than likely they're going to look at either a utility bill similar to what we think we may have, or a property tax increase to cover that cost. The advantage to whomever does it, uh, when I was with Waste Management, we had six cities that we serviced in the southern part of Tennessee. Uh, in election time, especially the new mayor getting elected, would always get a phone call. We need to do something special. Okay, here's what that can cost you. So you can get some perks like that to help the local government. If the county is doing it for them, then they're not going to get that type of perk. The county could get it, but the, the actual cities would. And the other thing you'd have involved, you'd have to have somebody on staff that's going to actually count the homes. You know, homes get torn down or burned, whatever reason. So you know, homes. Would, number can go down and it goes up when you build new ones. Advantage for the, the companies, then they get a check from whoever put the contract out. So they'll get paid every month. They don't have to worry about the residents not paying on time. So most often when you get into that situation, the cost per home <coughs> is much less. And then sometimes you get into a situation that it's, that it's not enough. When I was at Waste Management, they had a guy that his job for Tennessee was to hit all those municipalities and, and renegotiate the contracts and everything else. And so he would call me and I'd go do the discussion for him because he was in Knoxville. And we had a, a small town just south of here. And he said, we need to renegotiate the contract. And I said, no, we need to let it go out for bid. He said, why? I said, because it's $7.50 per home for unlimited bags. We're losing money. Well, if it goes out to bid, how you know you're going to get it? You only got one competitor. They're going to come to the courthouse just like we would to see how much we're charging. And they were going to need to go up, and they're not going to bid on it because they won't, they're afraid they won't get it. So what are we going to do? I said, we'll be the only bidder at $9.20 a home. That won't work. Okay. Well, they let us do it, and it did work. And I was sitting in the meeting when they opened the, the, the contract, or the bid. And one of the city councilmen looked at me, he said, you with waste management? I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, if we reject this bid, would your price go down? I said, why would it when I'm the only bidder? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> but, 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 you know, so, but it was too cheap. You know, and it wasn't that many homes either. But it, it's, you know, those type of structures are how the large cities were done. And we would do something similar to that. Well, the thing I'm concerned with is right now some people are paying 20 to $25 for a private company. 
All right, and then if we go and do things ourselves, we're looking. We got any, We got a charge. Absolutely. We have no choice. So now, let's say we did fifteen dollars. So that's forty dollars. And then, would you not? I would think that these private companies would be putting them out of work because people are going to say, "I'm paying fifteen now. I'm not going to pay twenty-five." You'd put it out for bid for the private companies to award the bids too. You know, as far as us buying the fleet of trucks and doing it ourselves, I, I don't recommend us doing that. No, I'm saying we're going to, if we do that, we have to charge. It's no matter. I mean, it's going to be a charge for us. Mm -hmm. So that would be on them. They're going to be paying 25 plus they're going to get paid here. I mean, I would say if I'm going to pay 15 bucks to the county, they're going to take care of my trash. If so are we going to be putting people out of work? No. Well, the way that you're one, actually going one, of, one of the things that's going to happen there is you know, you have multiple trucks running down the same street. Some of them running down the same street on the same day, picking up different color trash cans. Mm -hmm. That would go away, and you would have one truck in that area, and they would have every home. So with gaining that much density, they can go down on their operational cost. So if they're if the customer's paying $25 today, they're probably not going to pay that much when it goes out to a bid situation to where the company has every home. So it should save the current people that have private subscriptions money. Now, the ones that are using convenience centers, instead of paying for that, no, it's going to cost them some. Because they're not used to paying anything today. Question. The companies that bid on this, is the public going to pay the company? Are they going to, are we going to have to charge a fee and pay the company? How is this going to work? If, if the county or the city, whatever governmental entity, puts that bid out and awards that bid, that government will pay the contractor his monthly bill. All the residents would have to pay either a yearly fee or a monthly fee, whatever that structure is, to cover that cost. And property taxes is not the way to do it. So if you let the mom and pop collectors still collect, will the county have to pay them? Yes. Or will the homeowner pay? No, the, the county would pay. If if it is in a, in a bid situation in that territory, then the county, if the county did it, the county would pay the, the private hauler. Now, if it's out in the rural area that we have not done that and, and a private hauler is out there, then that's between them and the customer. But what I'm saying is we need, if whatever disposal we decide <coughs> on needs to be able to cover their disposal. So, like, if we charge everybody a fee, somebody out in the rural area has a private hauler that we're not paying, are they going to have to pay our fee also? No. Our fee would become a utility <coughs> bill, a user's fee. So if they're not using anything that we're doing, then they're not paying anything. centers open for the rural areas. We keep them open for all the areas. Oh, yeah. <coughs> well, why would you keep them open for all areas if you're doing curbside? Because curbside collection doesn't do bulk items, furniture, that type of stuff. Uh, if you don't include recycling, then you're not going to have recycle collection at the curbside. So you're still going to have to have the centers open. And then you're going to be out of town or you're going to forget to put your trash out. Or are you going to have a large family come in for a wedding or something and have extra trash so the centers would still be used for that type of stuff? And you would have a, a you would pay to use the service center? There would be some type of mechanism set up to where if you use the center, you were paying for it. Now, I do not recommend paying at the site. Our centers are out in the middle of nowhere. You'll get somebody killed for 100 bucks. Like a license plate ID program or something. You, like you that. buy a placard, a punch yeah. card, a placard. I don't know. Like her one to placard mm -hmm. something that. Shows. They, they can, you know, you get so many punches off of it, and then you have to go get another one or something like that. Gotcha. And on bulk items, I don't. They need some kind of tag you would attach to it somehow that they could not take it back off and reuse it. I'm not sure how that would work, but something similar to that. Now, in Davidson County, they actually charge, and it's. 
six dollars for a small truck and twelve dollars for a big one. And I asked him, I said, why six and twelve? You got to deal with dollar bills when you do that. Why not just five and ten? But that's you know that's their structure, and they collect there. Now they only have four sites, but the huge difference in Davidson County from us is most of the residents already have curbside collection, so their sites are just for the items that's not collected at the curb most often anyway. All right, um, Becky, question on uh, page two, paragraph one, the bottom of paragraph two. <coughs> I asked a little bit about the higher education and the higher education trash is not included in our tonnage and you said MTSU takes care of their own trash. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it goes to Middle Point, but I'm, I'm con based on what you said, I'm confused as to what the intent is for the last line in paragraph two. It is, it is important to note that there are three campuses and they directly affect the flow of residential solid waste materials. That's your population. That's the population. So if you have college students in your town and they typically leave for the summer, okay. all of a sudden your volume is going to be less, but your population is going to be less and they're directly related. Does that make sense? It does it now that you've mentioned matters the, on the population. It matters on the yeah. calendar. Okay. You know, so semester to semester, you're going to have folks moving in, folks moving out. Um, you're going to have a lot of probably furniture and other bulky goods at those times, especially in May at the end of the year. Yeah. During school, you'll have a lot of pizza boxes and beverage containers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, were there any other questions about page two? Down at the bottom in the, in the graph, is the math right or wrong? Over in 2008, the year 2018. For the, for the actual landfill tons? It says class one multiple solid waste landfill in tons over on the far right hand side 2018 has Rutherford County including schools, city of Murfreesboro, and in the bottom block it says total. No, it's not. The computer calculator didn't work. The well. computer calculator didn't work well. <laughs> 83. <coughs> 83, 754. 78. Thank you. Now I have a further question. Into this. Uh, Mac made a comment. Each person, a ton of trash a year, correct? Mm -hmm. That's what the state tells us. And you have our number here in 2018 for the county, 44,000 tons. Is that for the year? Yes, it is then I know for sure there was more than 44,000 people in Rutherford County at that time. Where, where am I missing this? You've got a lot of Rutherford County residents that have, uh, that pay for somebody to pick up their trash and they don't use convenience centers. The, we tried to run some numbers several years ago and then got close. About 20% of the residents, the only means of trash disposal was convenience centers. You think that 44 would probably reflect rural, yes. rural area? Well, it'd be rural area, but 51, now this number's three years old. I hadn't done the math on it in three years, but Smyrna has Weekly Lane, which is our largest center and our busiest center. Laverne has Sand Hill Road, and Amelville is in the Smyrna area, and all three of those are north of 840. Those three centers represent 51% of what we do. That's the heavily populated area. And then when you get here, our Rock Crusher Center is a half a mile south of Murfreesboro. Walter Hill is roughly a half a mile north of Murfreesboro city limits. Those two are the next busiest. Your populated areas are your busier places. And so we get a lot of traffic coming from the city residents. <coughs> Up above that graph in the red ink, so it's 45,000 to 325,000 ton each year. Do we really need a range that wide? Well, that depends on if you're looking at dealing with what we deal with today, or you're looking at dealing with all the residential tracks within the county. That's 
that's what creates that range. I'm done. Can we can we define that that three hundred twenty five thousand is estimated total countywide? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I, that's this is the first and only time we see that, see that number, and somebody's going to know where that came from and what that means. I think we well, I do just the definition of where the three twenty five is derived. So if we built a recycling company, I mean you'd be a fool if you didn't do my words right. It's gotta be seven hundred tons. I would say a recycling to take seven hundred tons based on our population and the growth. We don't have enough to even come close to running it. I mean, if it's 44,000, I mean, that's not even, that's maybe two or three lines, maybe two lines at the best. Mm -hmm. Would that be agree? We were looking at, a while back, a uh, company was looking at doing a 25 ton per day unit. We could keep that thing running about four hours. You know, so anything that we do as far as technology wise, we're probably we're gonna to need to look at partners. And the partner I'm speaking of would be the, the company partner. You know, so you, you mentioned recycling, so your recycled company that's gonna actually process that material and market that material. There that's the partner you're looking for. Uh, so we send our stuff there. And then the remainder of the stuff they would be bringing in from somewhere else. So we're right back to where we was, people bringing in their trash. Yes. Head scratcher, isn't it? <laughs> This is one of those where you don't necessarily want more trash because you got to manage it, but you got to have a certain volume in order to make an efficient operation in any function you choose, whether you're composting it, recycling it, landfilling it. Otherwise. I mean, I, agree. I, I mean, you know how confident I am in you, but I'm also looking at $35 million to build a facility, $42 million, really. That's, you see what, I mean, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then if these people are gonna bring in <coughs> trash, it's gotta be a hosting. And that doesn't even come close to running for all the, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a, I'm kind of concerned with that. I would say the company would get to host the, the county probably wouldn't touch it. Well, I'd, I'd be, if they're gonna bring trash in from another county to our county, we get something out of it. We're getting something out of it. But that's when it comes down to negotiating what goes into the next step in the RFP. Mm -hmm. You sit down at the table after you identify whoever wants to do whatever they want to do, then we pick out what we want to do with whatever partner, and then we negotiate. Uh, See, we, we haven't paid a disposal bill to Middle Point Landfill in a long time. Now, we used to. Back when the, the county uh, first started, that's when it was BFI. BFI actually hauled the convenience centers and charged for them. We paid the tipping fee. We paid the tipping fee, and the haul and disposal combined was 100 bucks. And they didn't have a scale. The dozer operator had a notebook, so he wrote down the name of the company and then the truck number and the size container. That's how they kept up with who to build. It's changed a whole lot since then. Now, if we, if we had been paying our tonnage bill when we did the flood, uh, O'Byrne and Smyrna got hit hard for the flood, <coughs> they asked us if we could put in a temporary convenience center, and we did. And it was literally on the old Nashville Highway right at the smyrna Laverne city limits where they joined. There's a large gravel parking lot in the building there. And that landowner let us use that parking lot, and their box 100 is Laverne's. I think they're volunteer fire people, but they actually manned the site, so we didn't have any fences. They were there 24-7. And we paid disposal at Middle Point. 
and our disposal rate at Middle Point was thirty dollars a ton. And the reason, the way they came up with that, is that's what we charge <coughs> residents at our landfill. Now, with our tonnage and stuff, and trying to negotiate a rate, it would probably be less than thirty, but not a lot. Okay. So we've talked about the range of volume, and I think that is something you know each of you obviously have to consider as far as what you want to include there and, and come to consensus at some point. Um, below that are your functions, your community education, your collection, your processing, transportation, and landfill. Um, Education. Can we start right there? Mm -hmm. um, on that top half of that page, uh, uh, talk about education a little bit. Is there anything you want to expand on in terms of education? I mean, do you actually see like a company or a public relations group actually wanting to take on? The education part. Do the probably there's some people, businesses that do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, um, there would be maybe a, a company that wants to come in and and run a, and this is just an example, but a specific you know section of your website for recycling and have social media and have an interactive piece to it. Okay. Um, there may be folks that want to come in and do print material. Uh, but who would create that print material? What? We'd have to have a marketing company or otherwise. They, I mean, obviously, you would have input into it. Um, would there be a non profit or a non profit that would be interested in? Maybe. Well, uh, there could be. Mac and I have we've, we've talked about this, and I talked to, to <clears throat> Becky about it as well. Ashley's you know, our new PIO. She's been working with Mac. They, they, we want to engage local people. Uh, the not-for-profits, our recycle Rutherford, et cetera. Uh, the idea of coming up with uh, uh, groups of ambassadors uh, to actually go out and say, like on Saturday, they go to the convenience center um, between the hours of uh, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock and, and do some education at each one of the convenience centers. And if, they, if somebody brings in a a peanut butter jar, we use that, and I guess that's going to be the thing that we always use is a <laughs> peanut butter jar. That if it comes in, it's got peanut butter in it, and it's not totally cleaned out, and they taught it's a number two, the cap's a number five, and you throw it over with peanut butter in it, and the dumpster with all the plastics, you contaminate the whole load. So it's that uh, getting the volunteers, and it's going to take a huge educational part, and that's why we wanted to put that as number one on, the, on our list of, of trying to change the the thinking of people in Rutherford County. We have to change the way they think about how they, they look at it. Okay, I need to wash that off. I need to take a label off. Number five goes over here, number two goes over here. You know, it's going to be some real education, and our schools can help us. Um, uh, I think we just put out the bid. Your, uh, uh, we've posted the job for your part, your uh, uh, part time, whatever. You're going to use her for recycling, right? Okay, um, that will come under Max budget. But when we put out the RFI, any any group that wants to come in and help volunteer and set aside monies to help in that educational part, because the money they spend on advertising and marketing helps them as well. It helps them sell a clean load of plastic as opposed to one that's just going to the landfill. We can't keep doing that. And then the. March the 11th, Ashley and I are having an appointment in Nashville to meet with a Turnip Green Creative Reuse Company, and they they're doing a lot of the education in the in the metro schools. Uh, they've got a really good program set up, and, and they they can travel. So we're looking at possibility of if we can work out something and get with the mayor too. But you know, hiring that company instead of us going into schools, they're already doing all that. So you don't have to recreate. Don't bring a bit to yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, then uh, item two, you've got collection, which you've broken down into A and B, and then you jump into processing. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Should 
should number four, which is transportation, truck, train, or boat, should that be moved up to number three? Because number two, as you've got it shown, item two and item four are all about handling trash, not necessarily processing trash. Mm -hmm. So it would me make sense that you keep those two items together. Okay, so move transportation to number three and processing to number four. Yes. Okay. And then, which brings me to another question, as, as far as the definition. Transfer station is in the processing, item C, processing. Mm -hmm. Could you argue that trans, the transfer station needs to be part of the collection in, in two? Or is trans, transfer station actually part of the processing? You're at, go ahead. Part of the processing. Okay. You're actually taking smaller loads, condensing them into a larger load, so you're actually moving material. Okay. All right. Um, and then in the processing, you've got materials recovery, composting, transfer station, uh, waste to energy, and then you've got it. Uh, broken out into gasification, pyrolysis, anaerobic, thermal, mechanical, plasma gasification, incineration, quotation, or mm -hmm. mass burn, uh, conversion to fuel, etc. But I don't see any that any I don't see the word electricity anywhere. Should we? I know that kind of falls under the global waste of energy, but you've you've defined several but not electricity. Should we add electricity in there just in case some big group says, hey man, we want to take this all and do something with it? Most of you companies that are going to be looking at that, they have a specific direction they're going to want to go anyway. Uh, electricity in our market area is probably not the best way to go. Yeah, but there may be somebody what? smarter out there. That electricity is an output, so these are the actual processing that get you to use steam or electricity. Well, fuel's an output, but you've got that listed. The conversion to fuel. And we can leave that strictly as waste to energy. I and mean, we can leave that as open-ended as you want it to be. Yeah, those were just, energy. those examples were actually from my notes of what I've taken from being here at meetings over yeah. the past year, year yeah. and a half. It, it just seems that you've started to define several waste to energy options there, mm -hmm. but electricity wasn't one of them, and I thought it ought to be in there. We can include it Whether in the Whether somebody lights on it or not. It, or we could leave it at just waste to energy. Well, you're, you're covering everything, so it needs to be in there. Yeah, I okay. think so. And would, I know I know item six is the C and D as a standalone. Would C and D also be part of the processing? I mean, does it, does it need to be incorporated in the processing category? Or are you okay, everybody okay with it just being by itself as a separate item? Are you talking about construction and demo? Yes, yeah, 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 construction and demo. The reason it's separate is typically it's commercial. Um, we can certainly add it here. I think that's a factor in when we start to look at landfill availability and airspace, because a lot of the C and D waste is now going into class one landfills. Mm -hmm. um, See, if we're looking at residential waste, then C and D is not part of that. All the new homes get built are creating the C and D waste, but yeah. it's still not residential waste. Okay. Okay. I just C, C and D needs to be a material that gets addressed. I'm with you. So number six is not dealing with reclamation, the entire reclamation to that 70 plus acres of the old landfill. So, two so different number two six, different okay. number six under the functions is the landfill reclamation. Number eight under the materials is the construction and demolition. C and D is, is speaking of newly generated stuff. Reclamation is, the, is actually reclaiming the old It's two different things. Yeah. 
You're seeing where it says class three, four construction and demolition yeah, license. Yeah. That's reference to your actual, your actual landfill. The okay. landfill that's that's there that you all are talking about replacing. Right. So should you put the <clears throat> should you put the number of acres that it that it, that it entails for reclamation? Okay. And since this is an information packet. number of acres will probably be in the results from the core sampling. I think they tell how large an area they sample. They would. And would we need to make a note there that if anybody wants to visit that? I mean, I know they'll have core samples, but, you know, a contractor or a vendor would probably want to look at the site, walk the site. Do they need to call somebody, make an appointment to yeah. physically walk the site? Right. <laughs> I tell you what, it's not be a bad idea. idea. Well, it's, it's, I'm not joking. And, I know. I mean, you, need to, you need to say, I would. I'm, I'm in the landfill that. business, uh, TDAC's got a rule in there in the landfill and in the convenience centers, there's no scavenging. So when we get a lot of the state people to come out and want to look at the landfill, I remind them if all the chiggers and ticks that they gather, they have to bring back. Uh -huh. they, can't, they can't scavenge them. <laughs> So are we at the bottom of page three? <coughs> We're starting to look at the materials. Okay. Where you see the municipal solid waste, organics, recyclables, metals. So, okay, so under organics, you got wood, yard, food waste, both food rescue, food recovery, treated wastewater sludge. Do we need a category for other organics that would fall outside of the... I, I don't know if that's all I don't know if that's all encompassing is it is there more than wood yard food and sludge well the construction demolition would be the wood waste your household trash would be your food waste the sludge would be like the Mersboro sewer department right uh, Smyrna has one too uh, if you're looking at like ground up yard <coughs> we don't do that the city of Mersboro does so you could include that part in there because we're probably going to be partnered anyway. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to capture everything. Oh, well, okay. that's, that's a good thing. And then the, I, I added the same note in, in metals. You, you, you've only defined steel, tin, and aluminum. And I, I added the D other in organics. Or mixed metals. Or, yeah, mixed metals, yeah. Hazardous waste is there, even though you all currently, with, in partnership with the city, provide two of those drop off events a year. The first Saturday of April and the first Saturday of November is this year. It'll be at the Florence Road facility where they grind the brush from 8 until noon and it's for residential use only. Uh, companies, the small quantity generators, can call TDEC and, and get the vendor's number and set up an appointment to come after lunch and pay to get rid of theirs. How much longer does that program go on? And there a time limit on that? Didn't they give us a certain amount of money for a certain number of years? No, uh, not only the HHW. Uh, TDEC is trying to get out of that business, trying to get the county to do it themselves. So uh, in order to have an HHW event, you have to collect electronics and paint and batteries and those type of things. So that's what we do. That's the reason we have Haley Road. Okay. 
company just to have meet that qualification. So first April, from what time? From eight until noon. That'll be for you. You pull chemicals, your pesticides and herbicides, and you uh, automotive fluids, no ammunition. Uh, they'll do drugs, medications, prescription type medications that expired. They'll do those. They'll collect the, the sharps containers for the diabetics and things like that. Uh, they don't have to wait every, twice a year to do that. You can do that in our convenience centers if you'll take a heavy duty laundry detergent bottle, put your needles in it, screw the cap on real tight, take it up with duct tape, and then put it in an open top container. That way, you don't get crushed in a compactor. We can take those from residential. A lot of people are bringing light bulbs, fluorescent tubes. We collect those at Haley, Haley Road five days a week, so you don't have to save those for, for you know, every other, or twice a year event. Um, in your graph under recyclables for the four years you've got listed there, I see organics is not part of the equation. We don't currently do those. And there's not really a way of telling. We have no idea of knowing what kind of tonnage you're out for. Yeah. One we gallon. Pick another community. One gallon per person per day or per week, whatever. You know, just okay. All right. Are the numbers in that graph actual numbers or are they computer generated? Most of those are actual numbers. And, and I'll check them out. And it's not, the city of is <laughs> not in here, just the county? Their mulch is not in there. This is just. Uh, now we, we haul the glass and the aluminum from the city <coughs> convenience center, so that number is added in there. It's not broken out separate just for theirs, it's just their commodity is mixed with ours. So will you verify that those numbers are correct and do or do not include City of Murfreesboro numbers? You don't want Murfreesboro numbers? Well, I don't, do. I, I don't know. There, there's not a big number. Okay. They're, they're, which is your mulch might be, but they're, I don't know. Yeah, the wood chips is over 40,000 tons. I mean, I, I guess, I'm sorry. Did you want Murfreesboro wood chips included? Well, there? I don't know. Let's chat about it. Okay. Um, if we're going to think so. I, did, I mean, I do. I think you kind of need to be all in a little bit. Okay. Same way with the cans and the glass. He, if, if somebody, if a vendor, I'm, again, I'm trying to put myself as being a vendor. And, and if I even want to take a look at this RFI, and I'm going to think, well, okay, they're not... They got a number here. Is that county? Is that city? What, what are they saying here? I'm not sure I really know looking at this. So we can list Murfreesboro separately? You could we list it separately. You could give an estimate. You could break it out county and city <laughs> with an estimate because. Well, the city knows. The city knows. actually has, the city okay. has actual numbers as well. Okay. Because I. You know, cans are can, can and it ultimately will be recycled. Right. If you're doing food waste, and a lot of the food waste is, is mixed with wood waste, so, you know, you let those people know that, hey, there's some wood waste here that, that one of us managed, you know. I, I guess if I was a vendor, I would want to know what the potential is countywide. If I'm looking at glass, if I'm looking at cans, what's my potential? If I'm only getting Rutherford County information, uh, that's I'm just not giving me the whole picture. That's why I say what I say. I may be full of it, but that's why I say what I say. Well, Murfreesboro is part of the county, so. Yeah. Do we need to start working toward a MOU? We will. 
as soon as we get. So any other that. questions about the first That was my thing. I'm I'm told the mayor. What up? It, he asked a question: Do we need to start uh, an MOU with with the city of Murfreesboro? What I've shared with each one of the mayors: Once we once we get it, and we're looking at probably uh, a ninety day uh, term to get the once we put out the RFI, ninety days to get a response. And I've told the mayors that after that, then it's time for us to sit down, and all of us collectively as a as a county uh, and all the cities start looking. That what's the best options for all of us as a county? And that would generate the MOU at that point. Right. So, do you really think we should put Murphy's first, which I were discussing, in this bidding process? Yes, sir. You think so? I do. What if they build a transfer station and truck it to a landfill somewhere? Will that not affect how they bid for their product and it sure. not be here? Sure. And the hard, but hard again, part. they're not bidding on anything right off the bat. They're just, just bringing some information. information. That's yeah. all this first and the R, That's after 90 days, then the RFP will go out. Uh, I, I know the city's looking at in their budget to, to do some transfer stations, but only to bring, um, to dump the trash and pick it up in larger trucks and take it to Middle Point, not to take it out of the county. They want, they want their smaller trucks in the neighborhoods dump it quickly, get back out there in the neighborhoods and pick it up faster. And we would look for doing the same thing if, if they had one. The, the thing that we would have to do is, is calculate what it's going to cost for the transfer trailer truck transportation to get it to middle point and how many truck loads are we going to save. We'd have to do the math and see if it makes sense to actually do all that. But I think it would. Now the, the hard part for getting these RFIs is going to be for the companies that are looking at it. When is Middle Point going to close? Well, no. So they're going to try to give you some numbers. They're going to spend 90 days to come up with some numbers. That they're going to try to give you, I can do this and operate with this type of material on this size piece of property for, and they can't give you a dollar sign because they don't know if they're going to do it in three years or 10 years. That's the hard part about the, trying to get these responses back in. They're, they're going to put the rate factor on there higher because they're anticipating it's going to be six to eight. So they're going to say it soon. It's 20% more cost. Like if they're going to come in here in 2026, I mean, prices are going to go up, you know. So they're going to try to put that tag that on there. And it's going to be hard for them to do because they don't, they don't know what that number should be. Well, exactly. They're <coughs> it's, yeah, it's going to be real hard. And then if we... If we pull the trigger, we get some company that can do exactly what we want to do, and here's the dollar, and we agree that's the dollar. All right, let's do it. And we get it and get it up and operational before Middle Point closes. Then all of our trash is going to this facility, and our free disposal just went away. You know, so we left some stuff on the table. If we wait till it closes, then we got no place to go, and then we got a problem. So it's it's going to be a really really hard decision, and the timing is going to be almost <coughs> impossible to get right. There's, there's a balance there somewhere, and, and there's nothing that says um, you know, if you build a facility and you accept material from other places, other companies, they pay you for that. There's nothing that says your residential waste can't still go to middle point, and you're getting revenue from your scale at your facility. Uh, number three, processing. When you have on here, Mark, and then composting, um, can you, can we like put on there, uh, do we need a minimum ton, like a 350 ton facility, a 700 ton facility? Do we need to put a minimum on that or? I think we, my opinion. Because if somebody comes in here and wants a 50. What, then we reject it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is there, do we have a number that we, I feel comfortable with uh, 700, that's where I feel. 700 tons per day. Yes, I'm thinking 30 and 40 years. I'm thinking that I'm thinking I don't want to do any more of this. <laughs> you don't want top trash anymore. <laughs> I think the way 
to get you where you want to be. Could be in the language that you write that you manage our current and future trash. And then they would have to do the calculations just like we would have to do the calculation. And it's an estimate. Uh, but you know, you don't want it to, whatever is built tomorrow needs to be larger than what our trash is today. I think on an RFI, if you lock them down to a, to any type of strong number, let them estimate. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody, you know, it's going to be up to them of what they think they're willing to put, stake their assets of their company based on what they think that they can can do over the next five years, 10 years, 30 years, 40 years. Uh, let them come in and estimate. And if I, somebody comes in with 50 tons, we, we don't think mm -hmm. that that's going to handle our needs. So push them aside and we'll start negotiating with the next one. Yeah, more than likely what's going to happen is, is Wayne Blair Incorporated is going to come in, and he's, he's been in the trash business for a long time, and he's recycled. He's done everything that we want to do. Tell me about that. And, and <laughs> he's going to look at it really strongly. So if I'm going to invest in this piece of property and this equipment to handle their trash, I need a little bit more trash than that. So I'm going to wind up, Blair and company is going to wind up contracting with some other people to bring it into that facility as well. And you need to be prepared for that. And I think these larger companies well, <clears throat> like insurance carriers, they have actuaries. You know, they just about crunch numbers. You know, tell you exactly who's going to die, when, mm -hmm. and they should be able to do the same thing with our trash. You know, yeah. it's not like trash was born yesterday. We've, trash we've been, is trash. Trash is trash. We've been we've had this issue for a long, long time, and it's a global issue, as as we talked about uh, earlier. So uh, I. I'd, I'd like to thank those that uh, uh, have the uh, the expertise and and would like to partner with us. They'll they'll have a clue, mm -hmm. and we we've, we've asked them to think outside the box. So you know, we're just not saying we want we want to burn. We want to uh, we want to do these others. You know, you tell us what you think is is our best uh, processing. And we may, not necessarily will, because we drug this out a long time, so we could drag it out a lot, lot longer. We may wind up being the first county in Middle Tennessee to take that step and plan that far into the future. So whatever we do is probably going to help other counties in their decision-making process. They are. Every county's watching us right now. They probably won't. They probably use, utilize this as their. Uh, uh, is there a cookie cutter yeah, proposal? Benchmark, yeah. Should, should, should be a bargaining chip. <laughs> That's right. We're going to be the guinea pig. So we do don't want to include a minimum. Want to include a, a I volume? I think you just give them the information that we have and let them come up. I think the, the more open we can leave it. It leaves their, their creative, their creativity possibly better. You said thinking outside the box. So it gives them that opportunity to come back with, with something we haven't even thought of yet. Sure. My concern is how many will come to the party. I could be surprised. You think? Okay. Well, I, think, I, I hope I am. Well, I think there will be. I think there will be people we haven't even thought of. I've had folks that have reached out to me from all over the country about different pieces and different right. things. Yeah, and all of a sudden, today, right? yeah. and all of a Good. sudden, there are folks out there with technology that we may or may not have ever seen or heard of. But you meandering through trash on a daily basis <laughs> over the a couple of times. <laughs> um, on the chart at the bottom of the page, I'm, I'm going to kind of go back to my very first question and philosophy about the chart on page one. We're talking about a 2020 RFI, but our current data is 2018. Do we have any kind of estimates that we could put for a 2020 column on recyclables? Working on those numbers right now. Page three. It actually will be 2019 numbers. Okay. Calendar year. Yeah, that's true. So we're close anyway. All right. And you can see the gradual increase. I mean, you can do an average, but as you, obviously, as you add people and you increase, it's directly related to the population. 
the annual progress report to the state is due at the end of next month. So those, most of those numbers have already been pulled together. What about uh, <clears throat> plan for facilities? Do they need to tell? Do they not need to tell us how much land they need and all that stuff? Is that on here? Yeah, and I think that's part of their what they would come back with in their proposal. I think it depends on what they propose. Like if they're going to come in and say, okay, we want to work with the public education piece, they're not going to need land necessarily. They're not going to be actually building infrastructure. Um, but recycling composting will. If it's an existing yeah. company, they may have capacity. Yeah. May not have capacity to manage the volume, but they may have room to expand. And, and I don't know the answer to that question, but there's a possibility. I think we leave it to them to come to us and tell us. This, have to, or this is what our operation can do, and this is how much land, this is our footprint. You want to partner with us or not? Or do you want to have skin in the game? <clears throat> uh, anything on the last page? <laughs> Which is kind of the legalese stuff. And there are some pieces of the request for expression of interest from Oregon that will fill in some of these blocks yeah, here okay. that we can look at. Okay. All right. Well, I do have one question on the back page. Mm -hmm. Request for information submittals and, and some, there may be better language in that Oregon mm -hmm. document. Um, this is just an RFI, so there's no money being talked about. You talk about responses shall be sealed and received in hand. Mm -hmm. Is that really necessary? That's what I said. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, you know, that's your choice. Um, I, I mean, is this, I, when you make a statement like that, does that preclude the fact that they could not submit electronically? Or do they have to show up in a sealed envelope? That's time a, then, so, so do you want to have a pre, um, you know, a pre-event meeting, yeah. pre-submission meeting, to actually have a conversation and see who those folks are. Do you want to require a pre-submission meeting? And if you don't come to the pre-submission meeting, you may or may not respond. And there, are, there are lots of ways to do this. Yeah. It, it's basically however you all prefer to do it. Yeah. Do you do a pre-submission meeting or not? Is it required or not? Yeah. We would need to decide that up front. Mm -hmm. what, what would you recommend? Being chairman of the purchasing committee, I would recommend <laughs> that they put it into uh, seal bid and not do it electronically. And let's go ahead and get them into the habit of doing it on, on a sealed envelope, bring it in personally or, or, or send it by FedEx like we do with purchasing. Um, because the RFP is definitely going to have to be that way. Because we want to be able to protect them. Um, uh, and, and I don't have a problem of, of signing on behalf of the county, uh, preserving the proprietary information that one of those companies may have and not share with any other company. Sure. And, and not anything that's not copyrighted be, or whatever. And not allowed else. to be public record. In that's correct. And another thing they have written in the, the Oregon one is that Mr. Sandlin is going to be answering questions. The last day to ask the questions is five days before the submittal. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, but these folks do understand that whatever they send us, sealed or otherwise, will be vetted in public. Okay. Okay. If it comes in once we open it, it's on camera. There are times when entities will hold that information internally until a contract is signed. So, well, that's right. Mr. Chairman, are we going to, like, if we get 10 bids in 10, so we're going to have to meet and discuss that one every meeting. Just discuss eight months. What about a 10 proposals every meeting? Yeah, I mean, if it's pretty extensive, we, I mean, we have to go through all of them. It'll take a long time. Would you? 
right. It depends on if you want to, you know, look at them by process. Okay, who all is going to do recycling? Who all is going to do composting? Or what, you know? I mean, I'll work that better. Or if you want to look at them individually, or this company is offering to do four of the things we need. This one's offering to do one. We look at these first. We look at those. You know, that's that's something that you all can look Just at. Just got to make sure we're organized on this. Yeah. So, so this group, us, basically say, okay, this is what we're going to bid, how we're going to bid it, but our other committee, the person committee, would actually open the bids and decide who would get the bid. Well, just... No, 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 no. no, 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 no that's what no, no, I'm asking yeah, because I know no. how first thing no, normally no, it works. So. Well, that's, that's true, but it, it would need to come back to this committee. No. I would, purchasing is not... All due respect, the person they haven't been involved in this process. That's why I brought this yes, up. So. No, no, I, I, I think the knowledge <coughs> is based here in this committee. I would uh, suggest that the purchasing committee open them like, like they should. Sure. And then, they, then it gets taken under advisement and sent to the public works committee. That's right. And, and those are following the thing, they're not electronically. Um, they <coughs> personally open them and then. Those are the things that typically happen with any other process that you all do for services or you know, good and really sort. So that's pretty standard to your common practice. Yeah. Or uh, practice. I, I know a lot of you probably haven't, maybe you have not got this document until tonight, but on page nine and nine of the Metro thing, they, they have a uh, Roman numeral eight next steps which you could almost scratch out the word metro and put in the county. Yes. Because uh, it talks about the fact that, you know, we have the right to review all and reject any, and that uh, that we would be developing a decision matrix to guide staff and officials through the process of determining the value versus cost of implementing proposed options. So it basically says, exactly. hey, look, we're going to look at all of you, and we don't have to... We don't have to take any of it if we don't like what we see. That's true. The last paragraph on that page, and we're jumping ahead, but the last paragraph on that page, Metro is developing a decision matrix. So that may be something you want to look at. As metro far National? As, no, in oh, the, this, this Metro. This, this metro. metro. Um, Portland, Oregon. Okay. So what are your criteria on the front end so that you're actually considering the same things okay. as you go through each? Becky, you, you might want to share with them what forms we thought would be appropriate for us. Uh, and it's up to this committee to decide what forms that are attached to the document that you have. Uh, so, um, you start with, uh, with that, let's. Yes. We're going to start with the sheet of just the list of items. Several of these we've already discussed. There are a handful of these that we've talked about that would be important to include in one you know, in one form or another. The third bullet point, develop minimum criteria to qualify to avoid inadequate applicants. I think you're going to find you're going to want folks that have already done what they say they can do in other communities. Which one? Uh, the third bullet point down. So this is where you start to talk about what will your decision matrix look like. And, and then the fourth bullet point goes hand in hand with that include provision requiring applicants to demonstrate experience managing the very very waste streams. So basically you're saying these are the qualifications that we need. We don't want you to have never built something and come here and build it here no. and say that it will work. Um, and then the next bullet point goes with those other two. Include provision requiring applicants to demonstrate proposed technology has been successfully deployed elsewhere, which is what I just mentioned. The, um, the financial provisions, I think if you request you know, their financial statement in general, you're going to get a pretty clear vision or a pretty clear peek about what they do. They've got a form in here. Mm -hmm. They do have a form in here. It's. Do we need to say that? Three. I mean, 
anytime you got somebody's financials, I mean, it's pretty easy. You know, do we need to say on there, you know, that we'll protect this, or do we not say that? Oh, sure. I mean, I wouldn't want my financials out, you know, just to anybody. Well, I think that would come later on in the discussions. Yeah, well, I, I think once you once you have chosen whoever you're going to give an RFP to, then. I mean, but wouldn't we want the finances up front? Why would I want a, somebody to come in here and get some pipe dream like we went through for the last year? Well, but some of those pipe dream things are, have been rather obvious to us, so we wouldn't worry about their financials because they probably are not going to be our pick. Well, I mean, I understand, Matt, but you just said it. People all over the country, so there's going to be things that we're not, you know, that we're not familiar sure. with. I just don't want to go in and get this great idea that all of a sudden, it's never been built. They got ten dollars in the bank. <laughs> I mean, that's sorry. I don't mean. We had one company had less than that, so they wanted us to furnish the. Yeah, they wanted, they wanted fifty-five billion. <laughs> yeah, they had less than ten. Yeah. So you can ask for a certain level of financial documentation here, and a deeper dive later, you can. Well, I agree with Mayor. Deep, once we get to a point where they're really serious, then we start getting some serious sure. numbers. But I'd like to at least see something. Yeah. You know, I don't know if y'all remember the guy coming here and said he wanted four, fifty-five million dollars from us. Yeah. You know, the mayor's got to go out the door, go on the well, internet, and find out the guys in fourteen different companies. You know, a complete joke. And I said joke. But I mean, it's just, I don't want to waste my time with this because this is so, I mean, this is, this is something that's going to last for 30 years. I mean, we got a lot of people watching do, this. Do we have the ability to run a Dun & Bradstreet on anybody that, I don't know that. Does, it, does it cost us to do that? Great. I don't know. D&B? That's a, that's a pretty, pretty easy to go okay. on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Miss Finance Director. <laughs> she hates it when I call her that. Home. We'll get you an answer to that. I, I, don't I, would think, I would think if we have anybody in question, we could easily run a DMV on them. Yeah, we, find uh, our banking relationship, I'm sure we could do that. Well, I'm talking about out of state folks that. Sure. Get and our if I mean, if that. they're serious about wanting to be part of the. Yeah. They're serious about wanting to be part and, of yeah, the if, system, if then to, they're not going to be. We could then ask for a general statement, a financial statement. The first series. Yeah. I mean, some places require bonds, some places require all kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we want to go through this document? Are there things that I know you all just got it? Do you all want to look at it and then? Thank you. You and I have kind of we gone through and kind of ferreted out the forms that we thought it might be appropriate. Yes. And that was yeah, number it's one, one, number. Number one, number two, two and, number four. and number four. So if you're looking at the form, this is actually page 10. It's not numbered. Basically, talk about, talk about form one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Response is submitted by, what's the legal company name, and just general information. Looks good. And then form two is basically saying these are the participating entities or these are our partners that will make this work. So if it's an integrated system, these are the partners that will function within that system. Um, if it's a, an infrastructure or construction piece, there's your construction entity piece or a option. Don't necessarily have to have that if you. Were. There were certain pieces of this that people were going to actually respond to. You may or may not have a construction piece, but there's a place for that if needed. So do we wait till we take somebody serious to do form number three? Well, we kind of looked at that, but we said once we get some financial information, is there a need for that? <coughs> fill that out, or just ask for a financial statement. So you think we should fill this out on other bids, or wait? No, wait. Look at it. Skipped up for three and you went to four. Mm -hmm. And 
then number four is a reference sheet for their experience. Um, number four is actually for a reference for their finance experience for projects, and then form five is your references for specific projects. What the project That's up was. to the committee if they want to add. Mm -hmm. uh, I think these two go hand in hand. Four forms. Yeah, form five kind of go together. No problem with that at all. And we can obviously tailor those to whatever you all want them to be. What information you want gathered. Is there a place to ask if they are bondable or if they have been bonded in the past? Yeah, it was on there, I believe. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I think it was on one or two. <clears throat> Down at the bottom of one of those forms. And if we get into the landfill reclamation side, somebody's want to do that, I recommend we get them bonded. That yes. way they can't walk off and leave us in a mess. Right. some large projects in this state where if it hadn't been for a bond, uh, oh, I think right. Thompson Bowling Arena was probably one of the most prominent. on those, any additions on those, anything else you all want put into a form for responses? Bombing needs to be on there. Got it. I saw it earlier. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> In the fine print. <laughs> Somewhere. But it, it needs, I do agree, it needs to be on there. So forms one, two, four, and five are going to be added to our. Is that right? Okay. Now we need to decide about a pre submission conference. If we're going to require one, if it's going to be voluntary because that would have to go out with this front page. So what's your pleasure? Gentlemen? What was the purpose? Well, the purpose would be for any interested party to come here and sit down and ask us questions, define anything that we have not clearly laid out, uh, and then they go back and with that information and continue on with it, it's basically they can ask questions about this however many pages we wind up with and other intentions other questions about population growth or tonnage or who what when where that we can answer for them to help better put them together in a better package it's like a pre-bid document basically is what it's like it should help decrease the number of questions that Steve, Steve would get. That's always helpful. <laughs> and then what happens is one one guy asks the question, that question is recorded, the answer is recorded, and then at the end of that meeting, uh, all the questions and answers are sent out to 
all those in attendance so everybody has access to all the information so one guy or girl, or girl can't say, hey, you didn't tell me that. Well, I'm not saying I'm against it, but as light on detail as this form right here is, anybody serious is going to roll in here with a book of questions we can't answer. There will be some we probably cannot answer. Yeah. You're right. Are you talking about this one or are you talking about this one? Talking that means they're going to be together, aren't they? Mm, it'll be yeah. a mix of the two that we just lie. talked about. That's, that's what I'm saying. You, it would be highly advisable, <clears throat> in my opinion, to have the pre uh, submission meeting to air out all the questions and concerns that we haven't thought of or they're not picking up in this document. Do we do it individually or do it in group lots? You know, you usually do it as a group. As a group? As a group? From a legal standpoint. Well, everybody hears the same thing. <clears throat> I don't see how you can do it. That could take the biggest part of the day, I would think. That could. That could. It's also the biggest thing that's come down the pike in the last 40 years, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They had that big tractor trailer truck going across the this week. <laughs> Yeah. It's an information exchange, and if, if we don't do it, Steve's going to get 10,000 phone calls. And we need to make sure that if he tells vendor A something, that it's the same thing, that same answer that Steve gives is also given to vendor B, C, D, E, F, and Q. That's why it's important to have a pre-meeting. As far as I'm concerned, Chairman, we got to have it. Yeah. I mean, I don't see how we can not. Yeah. I mean, we're in this for the long haul. I mean, we we knew how big this monster is. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure we yeah. dot every I and cross every T. Mm -hmm. Then the next the next question mm -hmm. is: Is it we're going to require it to be mandatory or volu or voluntary? A voluntary meeting. Um, that's I've seen it done both ways. That's a big question. If you yeah. if you make it mandatory and they don't show, then they don't bid. Then realistically, they can't bid on anything. Um, if if you have an intent to bid and they express an intent to bid, but choose not to attend the pre-meeting, they could still send in questions. Sure. Uh, they would still get the, all the Q and A's that were answered. As long as their name is on a list of intent, they would get anything discussed like back. It's on this page. Like an, like an addendum. Yeah. Bonding is on this page. Oh, okay. Have you been a snake? Oh. So the question is, you know, if somebody from New Zealand wants to come, are we going to make it mandatory that they come or voluntary that they come? Well, if we make it voluntary, they can still be it. Uh, the way I see it, and then if they don't have the information they needed when they make their bid, that's on them. That's yeah, not on that's us. Right. Yep. So I, I would lean toward making it voluntary, although I think it would be in their best interest and ours if they it did would, show up. So. It would behoove them to be here, but if there's, you, always, there's always mitigating circumstances for... Well, if you did it on a, on a televised meeting and they were out of the country, they could still be watching online and they could call or text or something. Or yeah, question. they could. Well, that, that would still fall under the voluntary category, in my opinion. So it's not mandatory. It not, so what we're saying is, if I hear you, no, we're going to request a voluntary pre-submission meeting. Um, and if we need to explain that, well, I mean, these are all smart people. They know what voluntary means. It's not going to preclude them from bidding if they don't attend. Now, if they don't show up for that meeting and they don't respond to the RFI, do you then let them respond to the proposal? That's something else to think about. Say that one more time. If they don't show so up for the meeting, they don't and they... show up for the pre-submission now. Uh huh. If they don't respond to the RFI. Are their bids entertained in the RFP process? Oh, later on down the road. Mm -hmm. That's just something to think about. So you got that Wayne Blair Incorporated, he's hiding in the woods yeah. over here waiting and nobody knows he's interested and then all of a sudden he's going to jump on that RFP. That's I what you're asking. I say let him. He's going to jump, let him jump, he'll have to 
you know, park bids, same as everybody else. He's part the with, same hoops yeah. otherwise. Mm -hmm. He can partner up with Wayne, who attended and sent out his. Y'all need to pay me out this. <laughs> 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 you know you started a new business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then. Do, <laughs> yeah. Do we want to leave the volume at forty five thousand to three twenty five? Or do you want to put to, it I think we need to explain why it's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've got a note to explain that, it. Good yeah. enough? I mean I am a I'm a we're all kind of smart dudes here and I, I really that number doesn't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. I need clarity. Well, does this, and it's, I'm kind of like uh, Mr. Piercy, you know, this is pretty vague in a lot of ways, but does that give them the, the op opportunity? Is it clear that, for instance, they know what our maximum trash input just for Rutherford <coughs> County is, and that's what we want. We want to look at that, but I don't want something not looked at because of the volume, you know, to let it be known that we may consider partnering with other counties or entities to get the volume to say do a do a merge for something that we wouldn't have the capacity to do on our own. But we might partner with say Metro Nashville. I mean does is that clear enough in, in this proposal to let that be known? That we want to do that if we want to do that. Now, I don't know that we want to do that on this bid, but mm -hmm. you know, I think that that's something that we might limit ourselves on who might bid. If they're saying, well, this small volume only, I don't want to fool with it. But if you threw Metro or Wilson or a couple more counties in, and not saying, I'm not saying do it here in Rutherford County, you know, if we partner with somebody else, they're going to have to pick up some of this flag too which might mean that these centers might be in their county instead of our county. So I'm, I'm just curious as if that's what we want to do, we yeah. want them to know that there's a possibility we could pick up more waste if we decide we want to go that direction. Now, I personally want to look at us stand alone first, but I don't want to preclude throwing away something that might help us and uh, be a better solution if yeah. we had the bigger volumes. And this is for Rutherford County only. So the answer to your question would be no, this, that's not clear here. But it can be made clear here. Well, is that what we what want, want to do? do? Personally, I'd like for that to be clear. Chairman, that, that's a fantastic point. And I, I would almost, <laughs> thinking out loud, I know that's dangerous. To me, it makes sense to put a paragraph in here that says Rutherford County has the option, based on tonnage needs, to partner with surrounding counties to whatever, blah, blah, blah. The same thing you just said. Because here's what's going to happen. If we don't say that, the third question at the pre-submission meeting is going to be some guy saying, man, I got the greatest equipment ever but I need a thousand tons to do this and you're only giving me 800. Are you, would you consider bringing in a couple hundred tons from your neighboring county? And then we're gonna have to give him an answer and look professional about it. So we might as well address it up front and say, these are Rutherford County numbers only. If your technology requires slightly more to be competitive, we would be open to an option of uh, partnering with neighboring counties, however you want to word it, but. Would you say slightly more? Slightly more. Capital, capital S. <laughs> <laughs> well, in page five, <coughs> bullet one, I mean, I kind of like this paragraph because it's, it's kind of answering a little bit of your question. It's like operation of a, of a processing facility, imagine 150 or more tons per day. I think that's a good, I mean, I think that's a reasonable request. I mean, would you? It is, but we don't have that much tonnage. I know, but I'm so, just saying we're going to. I mean, you know, yeah, you got to think we're thinking 30 years. 
I just don't want someone to be at 50 tons and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. or 150 tons or 300 tons. Yeah. yeah. Well, but also, too, we're not, I don't think we're going to build a facility right now for the population based in 2045. We're going to look at a technology that has bolt on capabilities that, as county grows, so does that technology by bolt on <laughs> equipment. So that's the catch 22. You, you don't build the Taj Mahal for 2045. Now you stage up to that. Yeah, but I think 150 is a reasonable number. I don't know. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, it is. We we probably city commercial road road for county combined would probably have more than that. Now. And see, the other thing that you got to look at too is if you got these people interested, are you expecting them to sit and wait till eight years to be ready? Are you wanting them to go ahead and build and start here? And if they build and start now, then our trash is still going to middle point. They're going to need trash coming in from somewhere else. I mean, there's a lot of variables there. It's going to be really hard to, to make a good decision. Well, you know, you make a good decision, it's just going to be tough coming up with it. So the first bullet point there speaks of an existing processing facility managing 150 or more tons per day. That's all the waste. If you look at the bottom of page 9, they reference it as, we want to verify that the reference facility is processing at least 150 tons of solid waste per day and is capable of scale up to 300 tons per day. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's better said. Yeah. I like mine. Yeah. A lot better than what I had. <laughs> Takes us all. Okay, so we're going to have a pre existing. We need to pick a date, but I'll let you and Mac and the mayor figure that out. Um, we'll be prepared to tell you at, uh, at your full meeting. Okay. Uh, it's going to be voluntary, and, and you're going to combine part of this metro paperwork with this and do you think we can see the final document on May on March 10th, 10th. which is our public works next yeah. scheduled public works meeting sure. okay and then if we'd like what we see perhaps we can even then perhaps we can even then send it up to full commission for review yeah. I'll do my best to get it to Rachel early She'll be so kind as to share it early. All right. As, as early as possible. So you all have it ahead of time. Right. I got a question, Matt. The borings. Uh, did we write a check? Did we say, okay, are we going to go out and start boring, drilling, We're waiting for the rain to quit? We requested a purchase order. Okay. So we've got the money to pay them when they get started. Okay. But it, as far as getting started, no. Yeah. So we, we really don't have anything that we've put in this report under that paragraph that says report and borings results should be available by we don't even know not yet and if we go 90 days from whatever day we pick on the after the 10th yeah and we go 90 days from that point in time it should be dry enough for them to have those borings done okay so we can we can say there you'll have borings yeah the post, postpone public works a week because of the election day I assume y'all would want to see this document once it's been put together at least one more time. And yes. discuss it at least one preferably, more time. Preferably on the 10th. Right. Uh, on the 10th, you've got uh, planning and engineering yep. and codes presenting their budgets plus their reports. I haven't met with the mayor yet on, on our budget, so I don't know if ours will be on the 10th yet or not. But it, but. You already gonna have a fairly long meeting on the tenth. I'll work yours to the next one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just say no budget increases, and we'll just get right to yeah, the part. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let them know I have a short meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, um, let's be prepared for the tenth, and if you have the documents a couple of days in advance, finished that you could send to this committee we could at least review and be prepared and maybe maybe this would be nothing more than a 15 20 minute review and we could make a motion to move forward to full commission 
Is that, I mean, is that, I mean, I know that's a big if, but that's I'll a, do my part. How about that? That's a fair, fair action item, don't you, don't you think? Okay. If we can't do it, twenty I mean, minutes. We can make a meeting on the seventeenth. <clears throat> yeah, the week after. The week after, and deal and give it full attention. I guess let's see. I guess let's give it a shot, and if it, we think that it's way too intensive, I don't want to rush through anything. But if if it's something we can cover in 15 minutes, then let's do it. If we need to do the 17th meeting and hash it out in two hours, then we'll we'll do it then. Be too long. Do you have to have yeah to advertise? Well, can well, we, can we advertise? Trying to for the 17th. Yeah. Um, what if we advertise the meeting for the 17th and then cancel it because we don't need it? If I got one out tomorrow on the 27th, they would publish probably on the 3rd of March. That's 15. That's plenty of time. Legally, that's to, right. To post it, yeah. But if you cancel it last minute, you know, we get that. But, yeah. I can stick a sign on the door that says mm -hmm. meeting canceled. Well, I, I, I feel like we should have a separate meeting. And okay. I'll tell you why. It's because when we start dealing with budgets, I mean, it makes your head float. Yeah. You know, and then we start getting a little bit cranky. A little cranky, and we get a little, you know, and then all of a sudden now you're asking us to do completely focus on. I mean, it's just so much. I, mean, I hate to tell you that the studies say human mind only 14 <laughs> minutes <laughs> attention span. <laughs> Are we supposed to set a timer for that? <laughs> yeah. I like, I like to say that the, the mind will only absorb what the posterior will have. That's right. That's right. So next month we're hearing codes budget, planning and engineering, and MAC and highways budget. Is that what I, I heard? Highway, I don't think. Highway's not. On the agenda she sent out was just codes, just had the two up there. Okay, so just far. the two. So that we're they splitting them up, so yeah. it's not overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's like two or three. So we're hearing codes and planning and engineering next meeting? Those normally don't come well, and, and what I'm telling each one of the committees, as, as some of you may have already heard, I'm, I'm not bringing my recommendation. I'm asking all the departments to come. I'm not making my recommendation at this point when I bring it to you. I am going to make, uh, I would like to have each committee actually get engaged um, and make a full recommendation as opposed to in the past committees have just always gone move to send on the budget mm -hmm. we have an obligation each committee has an obligation for the committees that they were assigned to I'd like for them to go through each one of the budgets like your budget line by line and, and, and ask those tough questions before we just put all the weight on back on chairman and, and, <laughs> and finance to, to make the deal because we all have to all of you I don't but all of you have to vote on whether there's gonna be a tax increase or not yeah. um, feeling a, a cool wind blowing as far as the property tax increase this year. Uh, well, when can we get a copy of that? Because if I get a copy of the day of the meeting, it's not going to do me much good. It's not going to do me. You know, I ain't going to be able to do what you're asking us to do. I mean, is there a way we can get that budget before? Sure. Because, I mean, I need at sure. least I need at least four or five days to go through the budget. Sure, we can do that. And then what solid waste budget is five budgets. So it's what? Five budgets and solid waste. Yeah, it's five different budgets. And you're, yeah. you're on the 10th? Your budget's on the 10th? It's not on the, not on the agenda for the 10th. Okay. So apparently we plan on doing that on the 10th. It's the funnest time so of the year. That's <laughs> what we do. That's what we do. Right? Save you your hand up. You said I did. All right, question. The, our next full commission is March 12th. You know, it'd be great to if we could agree on a report rewrite and send it up to full commission for the 12th. But that means if, to try and get full meeting in, we'd have to do it on the 11th or, or bump it up, bump it up a week prior to the fourth or fifth. Which is next week. That's okay. next week. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, what's your budget? Yeah. The fifth. Fifth. So Thursday's out. This is just RFI, though. Yeah. That's question. <laughs> yeah. Then I remember. You're going to take this to the full commission and ask them to vote on this RFI. Most of them have not 
listened or sure. followed these meetings, they're not going to have a clue what to vote on. Okay. What else is new? <laughs> That's not where I was going with it, but okay. <laughs> my, my question is, does it actually have to go to the full commission? When we put out RFPs, if we're going to put out one request for bids, we put it out and y'all don't even know about it. It goes through budget. I think it's for information. I, I, I think it's for information. I'm not sure that it would need to go to the full commission uh, unless y'all tell me wrong. I just I assumed it, R I just RFI assumed it was is, that's the responsibility order. of your committee, Mr. Chairman, of gathering the information and bring it back. Okay. And then when we do decide on um, after the RFP comes in, which will be, you know, if we go 90 days and then 90 days, we're looking at sometime in August or September, then that would be the time that the full commission is engaged. Okay. I, we've never done this before, so here. I just assumed we're, it was the respectful thing to do, but I'm, I'm okay well, with we're, we're sidetracking it. Where I'm pulling experience from is GBB. Yeah. We had all those meetings with GBB and the SWAC committee and everything else, and when it finally got ready to go to the full commission, yeah, we yeah. had to bring Harvey back to explain yeah, it all over again. Yeah, explain it all over again. again. You're right. I, yeah, I was there. I was part of that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was, so they were lost as last year's Easter egg. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right. Well, then, Mary, if you, if you don't feel it necessary, no, then sir, I, don't, let's I, I think it. this committee has the ability and authority to go ahead and just send out the request for information and then come back and, and inform it's going to be an educational part. If we, if we go to the full commission, you're going to have a lot of questions on people who are on the education committee that haven't been, have a clue about this at this point. Yeah. And then we come back and educate them on the RFP sometime in August or September. I think if you're on your report to the county commission, it would be appropriate as the chairman yeah, to, to report speak on to that. We we're getting ready to send out the RFI. Okay. Or to, to do that for the 90 days and then once we get the RFI back in the RFP yeah. is sent out, we get that back, we'll bring it back through the committee process. Just for information on sure. let them know what's going on. Robert, you're up to date. You're the statesman of the commission. Is this copacetic with you? It is, and I think what Steve's saying or insinuating is, you know, you give a report, and, you know, I think we should make what we got out there available to and commissioners either the in head. their box or email. Yeah. That way, the, those that want to dig into it can. Okay. If they got questions, and you know, they can send it to us. You know? But I, I think you're on the right track okay. there, letting them. I, I want people buying in on this. We all, 21 of us, going to have to make this decision. So we need to make the best choices we can. Yeah. On all, all 21 of us. Okay. Rachel has said she shared all these documents with all 21 of the commissioners up to now. Um. So going back to. Chairman Harris's request, do we want to then give uh, Rachel and this group till Tuesday the 17th to have our next solid waste evening meeting at St. Patty's Day for all you uh, Irishmen to uh, go over this document one more time, last time? So and give good it, with it. And give it the proper amount of time it sure. deserves. March 17th. Yes, sir. That's uh, Pat, St. Patty's Day. March 17. And that way, that way on the 10th, we'll just go with our normal public works budget, our meeting and budget edition. At 5.30. 5.30. Is that acceptable to everybody? And Rachel, can you or the mayor talk to the people that were doing the budget zone to get us, email us their budget? Sure. Yeah. I've seen the first round of those in public safety. Chanto and I did the other night. Mm -hmm. And I like the mayor's idea there. Of course, you know, I'm going to catch him right. in the budget. Steve and I, and of course, the rest of us. But, um, having that budget to look at uh, beforehand and they're basically they've got a wants and a needs budget that you're looking at so you can kind of see the difference on what they're asking and what they'd like to have so i, I like that and you know that gives you the chance to have a little more input instead of just having that budget put in front of you here's the mayor's recommendation well maybe i don't agree with his recommendation 
and here's why. You know, at least you've got the information, and you know he's spending a lot more time on it than we are on the front end. But this way, that gives you the opportunity to right, weigh questions. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it a lot easier on my committee too. So. <coughs> Anything else we need to discuss? Rachel, you good? Mac, you good? Everybody? All right. Let me let me explain my little snide comment back then about the full commission and well, it, it's a clarification. We we do such work in can all our work gets done in committees, as you all know. And when you're involved in that committee, you certainly have intimate knowledge of what's going on. But unless I have time, and I'm going to say the I, not the we. Unless I take the time to study and watch TV and read the reports of the five or more other committees, I have to truly trust that committee on what they're doing and the decisions they're making. So that comment was made snidely, but in jest. In jest, yeah. But the truth is, we're focused on our committees and we have a full plate. It's hard to it's hard to follow what other committees are doing. This so we have to truly rely on our fellow a very deep and brothers. complicated subject. Yeah. Yeah. This issue. Yeah. So, and you're right. It wouldn't be fair to go to the 21 full commissioners because they have no idea what we've done the last 18 months. Right. Four times a month. They have no idea. So, because they've got their own committees to worry about. So. Can you have an opportunity to give the report? Yeah. They'll read. They, they can read it when at their leisure. That's right. Adjourned. So moved. Thank you.